Okay, a golf ball of mass 150 grams is hit horizontally from the top of a 40 meter high cliff with a speed of 25 meters per second. Using G equals 9.8 meters per second squared and ignoring air resistance, calculate the following values. Calculate the time the ball takes to land. <coughs> okay, so step one, we draw a diagram. There's our golf ball, 25 metres per second. <coughs> um, what else have we got? The cliff is 40 metres high. <coughs> okay. Is that all we've got? Oh, the mass is 150 grams. Okay. So this is where it's important that we, we separate out our horizontal and our vertical components. Okay? So our horizontal speed is starting at 25 metres per second, but that has nothing to do with the vertical component, remember? So we just want to work out the time the ball takes to <laughs> land. All right, so in terms of our SUVAT equations, what, which letters have we got? U. We've got U. What's U? Zero. Zero. So at our initial speed... Is zero. What else have we got? S. S. What's S? 40. 40. Good. What else have we got? Do we have V? V is final velocity when it hits the ground. I don't think we have that. Ah, now what, what is 9.8? What does that represent? Acceleration. So I've got A. Okay, so using those three, USA, and what are we looking for? Oh, that's sounding jingoistic. We're looking for time. We're looking for T. So, which of our equations can we use? Thank you. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. All right, so remember, all we're doing is measuring the time it takes to fall this distance, this 40 metre distance. Okay, so if we put in our numbers, so S is 40, um, UT is 0, plus 1 half times 9.8, times t squared, so 40 equals 4.9 t squared, and t equals the square root of 40 over 4.9. Now that should be right. I get 2.86. Alright, so there is our time. So remember, this is just the time it takes to hit the ground. Now that time would be exactly the same whether it's travelling horizontally at 25 metres per second or if we just drop it. Okay? Because all we're concerned about, the only thing making it move vertically is the gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, and that's the same regardless of whether it's moving horizontally or not. Okay? So, there's our time. So it takes 2.86 seconds for it to hit the ground. Calculate the distance the ball travels from the base of the cliff, i.e. the range of the ball. Okay, so what we want to work out now, there's our ball. We want to work out, if our ball lands here, we want to work out the range. We want to work out that distance, how far it travels. And so for something like this, again... Well, we could use our SUVAT equations, but there's a much easier way to do it. Remember that our speed stays <coughs> constant, assuming we can ignore air resistance, which we can. So, if the speed stays constant, our speed is equal to distance over time. What's our speed? 25 is our speed. What's our time? 2.86. How easy is this? 
So our distance is going to be equal to 25 times 2.86. Seventy one point five meters. <coughs> okay, so remember in part A we found how long it takes the ball to hit the ground. Now we can use that time because it doesn't matter whether the ball is traveling horizontally or just being dropped. We can use that time because if it takes 2.86 seconds to hit the ground, that's how long it takes to complete its path. So we can use that time to work out how far it's actually going to travel. Okay, the next one. Calculate the velocity of the ball as it lands. We need two things here. What are they? Velocity is two things. What are they? Speed, direction. We need speed and direction for this. All right. So, when we're working this out, if we need speed and direction, now our speed and direction are going to be at an angle. All right, because you know the ball traveling this way is sort of landing at an angle. So we need to work out what that speed and direction are. And so we can use trigonometry or Pythagoras to work out what that is. So what is our let, let's work out our, our different speeds here. What's our horizontal speed? 25. So the ball is traveling with a horizontal speed of 25 meters per second. For the vertical speed, again, we're going to need to use our SUVAT equations because we need our vertical speed just before it hits the ground. Okay? So we need V. We're looking for V. Now, if we ever can, I like this SUVAT equation because it's the easiest. So we need to find V. What's U vertically? Zero. There is no vertical speed. What's our acceleration? 9.8. What's our time? 2.86. So that's about 28 metres per second. So we're going 25 metres per second horizontally. Now we need to set this up as a vector diagram. So 25 metres per second horizontally, 28 metres per second vertically. So our resultant vector is going to be between those like that. How do we find it? Pythagoras, excellent. So 25 squared plus 28 squared Square root. I get 37.5. Okay, so we've got our final speed. We also need our direction. The easiest way to get our direction is with trigonometry. So if we work out this angle here, we can say our final velocity is going to be 37.5 metres per second at whatever this angle is below the horizontal. Okay? So, we've got all three sides. So what do you prefer? Sine calls a tan. I heard sine. I heard more signs than tans. Let's go with sine. Sorry. So... Sine theta, so tower, opposite and hypotenuse. Oops, 28 over 37.5. So theta is going to be the inverse of sine. 28 over 37.5 equals if anyone's faster than me, feel free to go for it. 28 over 37.5. I get 48 degrees. No, 48.3 degrees. So your final answer for this would be 
Your velocity of the ball as it lands is 37.5 metres per second at 48.3 degrees below the horizontal. You need to give speed and direction.